Today we're talking about wiring on the Nova. Stick around. What is going on everybody? It is just an absolute disaster zone around here of wiring. Just everywhere, wiring, 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 wiring. Look at all this crap, oh, it's a mess. Okay, here's what's up. So, as I said in the last video, if you didn't watch it to the end, you probably didn't hear it, you should be watching these to the end. And you should also be subscribing and ringing that bell so you don't miss out on stuff like this. And of course, tuning stuff. We're still doing tuning stuff around here, I promise. But let's talk about where we're at right now. Let me get the camera set up here so I'm not holding it the whole time. And we are installing a painless wiring kit. And this is uh, part number 10102, which is kind of a universal GM key in dash harness. The cool thing about it is because it is designed to be on universal. Did I get oil on my Chevelle shirt? Darn it, I ruined another shirt. This is transmission oil, by the way. So <laughs> nonetheless, uh, most of the wires in this harness match up to the old stuff. And where that kind of turned out really cool was on the rear stuff. All the rear harness is completely unmolested. And so I'll show you kind of what I did. And I wanted to do this video before uh, I put the dash back in so you could see what I had going on behind the dash. So far, I have got the body harness in. I haven't done any of the engine stuff yet because we're doing the Terminator. So that's gonna dictate a lot of that stuff. And originally, as I said, we were planning on running bulkheads. I just don't like my options for running bulkheads. I think what we'll end up doing is probably just mount the Terminator in the engine bay and then clean up the harness from Holly because it's stupid long, stupid long. I mean, you could mount the damn thing almost in the trunk, still get all the way to the engine bay. So we got to clean that up. But let's look at the engine bay, what we've got going on here so far. And I used a lot more split loom than I've used in the past. Normally I use standard loom, uh, neither here nor there. The split loom's nice because you can go ahead and run all this stuff and then loom it up. And so we've got our blower control and we've got the new blower uh, with a new heater core for the big block. We've got our power that goes down to the starter and then ties into our battery uh, that's mounted in the truck. And then on this side, the trunk, not the truck, on this side we've got our alternator wire and then our main feed wire that goes into the fuse box. And then there's a couple uh, auxiliary wires in here. One of them is for the excitation of the alternator if you need it. This is a standard uh, Proform one wire internal regulation, don't need any of that crap. Uh, and then the other one is a voltage reference to the alternator, which actually is just a volt signal from the fuse box. So it can be used uh, probably as an auxiliary power. On top of it, we've got a chassis ground here. This one actually goes all the way back to the battery because I like having an additional ground all the way up to the front and then it comes up bridges the heads because this is very important you got to have your heads grounded well or else your ignition does not work worth a darn keep that in mind as you can see here's our ict stuff ict billet brackets our messier water pump we've got our super damper down there everything's looking good i need to get belts for this stuff i still need to put the intake manifold on but i want to get the wiring kind of done and out of the way Here's where it comes through. I did the grommet and I did a black off plate with the grommet. I don't know if you're going to be able to see underneath the wheel wood. There is the cannon plug for the engine section of the fuse block. So you can kind of see it down in there. There's only like six or seven pins in that right now. So we've got additional space, but uh, ignition power, things like that will be ran off that plug. Uh, and the other side of it's inside the car. Then this is our headlight harness comes down underneath ties in our headlights I still got some cleaning up to do on this stuff. These things have these weird LED halo style headlights and they were wired into The park lights and then to maybe the turn signals and jazz like that I don't know what I'm doing with all that yet But the big stuff that I want to show you is in the car. So hold on a second it's a mess in here, ignore my mess, but here is the rear harness. The factory harness was unmolested, as I said, so this is our uh, new painless harness. Comes to this point, we break out into a Deutsch connector, and then this is, of course, our speaker cables for the uh, custom audio stereo, whatever the hell it's called, thing set up I've got. Let's look at what's going on underneath the dash. So, 
connectors, connectors, connectors. The cool thing is these kits come with the connectors so you can repin the uh, factory connectors. So this is the factory headlight switch connector with the painless harness tied into it. And then this one right here is actually the wiper. I've got to set up the wiper switch. I was a little bit disappointed to find out that there's no additional wires for the windshield wipers. So the fuse block up underneath, kind of in the factory location, and then the wiring comes up over the top and is secured into a stock hanger right there. And this is where it breaks out into all the sub harnesses. That's the only area that's really not uh, kind of sheathed in some way, not in some kind of loom. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. To keep everything else nice and tidy, you gotta be able to manipulate these harnesses and get them pointed in the directions that you need. Everything else, though, is in a loom. And this is the horn connector. This is the uh, bu -bu 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 dash. This is, no. Yes, this is the dash connector. These wires actually go out to my tachometer, which is on the steering wheel. I need to add the connector onto that. Uh, here is our push button start. Uh, you know, I've got that key fob, the RFID key fob. Here's the ring for scanning it, but here's the push button start. So it's up out of the way. All of that nicely clean, tidy, zip tied up. Uh, we've got a bridge connector up here that goes from the painless harness over to our transmission section. And right now this is just the reverse and this will trigger the reverse lights uh, because I've got to do a couple other things as far as like the neutral safety, etc. And then eventually we'll be able to tie in the trans brake uh, button through this connector. But that harness comes down up underneath there, goes underneath the carpet and over. This is our steering harness that goes to our steering column. So our turn signals and everything works. Then we have our HVAC harness. And surprisingly enough, I used this section as the stock when I just rewrapped it in wire loom, but repinned some of this stuff out here. And then of course we've got our radio stuff over there. So that is everything on the dash side, nice and clean. If you would have seen what it looked like beforehand, it looked kind of like this. You know, let me see if I can find the old dash harness. I've cut a lot of the pieces off of it, but it had been hacked and slashed so much here. Oh, and just look at all these vampire taps and stuff like that. It, it's just miserable, unhappy, unhappy. It was not a happy harness. It is out of there. So what's left? Well, I need to get the dash in real quick. I'm gonna go ahead, throw that in, plug everything in, and then we're gonna put power to it and just test out things like the light. So give me a minute. So Painless is pretty specific about how you're supposed to test this thing out. You're supposed to use a 10 amp battery charger. I don't have a 10 amp battery charger. I don't know. I think we're just gonna send it, see what happens. What's the worst thing that happened? We shoot some sparks. So let's take a look. Doop, 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 and battery got side post installed this could be ugly or it could be completely anticlimactic okay well that was boring no sparks which is a good thing uh, you know what I haven't got my flashers yet. I need to grab, well, I'm thinking of it. I need to grab the key. Okay, ignition is on. Our fuel gauge works, that's a good sign. Battery voltage works, speedometer's working. Okay, so we've got power. Radio power's up, speakers aren't hooked up right now. Oh, blinkers aren't going to work because I don't have the front blinkers wired in. So the hazards won't work. Headlights work. High beam, low beam. High beam, low beams work. Okay, I don't think our brake lights are working. But our tail lights work and our park lights work. So, I gotta figure out, let's just try standard park lights. Oh, horn works. Oh, you know what, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, the flashers aren't installed. Hold on, let me go grab the flashers. <clears throat> I 
Okay, now our hazards are working. Let's check the rears. Rear hazards are working. Of course, the front aren't going to work because they're not hooked up. Okay. I got to remount this stupid ring. Did not mean to leave it up there. Okay, ignition on. Left turn signal sort of working. <laughs> nice and slow. Okay, that's normal since we only got one bulb. Right, turn signal is going a little bit faster, surprisingly. Okay. Okay, so wiring's working. Good thing. Now all we have to do is hook up the Terminator. Uh, before I get out of here though, let me go over what you guys haven't seen yet on the block. You probably saw me as I'm moving the camera around. We've got the block, transmission, torque converter, all that's installed, bolted up, ready to go. The headers that I picked up for 150 bucks on eBay, custom two and an eighth inch headers that have been jet hot coated, fit like a glove. Oh, saved me so much time. They clear the steering box. Everything is just perfect. The motor is bolted in, the trans is in, the tor new torque converter is in. This is ready to go. We just gotta start wiring up the Terminator. I wasn't expecting to be able to start this thing until sometime next month. And I don't know, depends on how this week goes. We might be starting it this weekend. So we probably should try and do a live show. I've got to figure out what I'm missing. I'm missing a couple parts for getting the fuel system hooked back up. I got to get the fender back on because the regulator's mounted to that along with the other coils. I've got to make sure all of our coil uh, wires, our plug wires are going to fit. Uh, gotta get the cooling system back in. I do got a lot to do, but I have, I think, almost every single thing that I need to do to finish it. The big thing was getting this harness knocked out. Now that that's out of the way, for the most part, I can focus on getting the Terminator stuff set up. This thing's gonna be awesome. And it's, I mean, we're talking, this will be running for the end of the month. I have no doubt about that. So, uh, that kind of wraps up with the uh, painless system. It worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. It was like 270 bucks. Uh, and it's a lot cleaner. I've still got to figure out a couple things on adding some auxiliary circuits and things like that. Uh, so if you have any insight on how to best do that, I'm probably going to just do a relay uh, and then tie into the battery feed and have the relay trigger on, key on, basically something like that. So trying to think if there's anything else that I missed. Um, oh, the transmission mount. I did want to talk to you about that. Worked perfectly. I had the big block mount bolted it up to the transmission cross member. It bolted right up to the transmission. All the bolts fell in place, no problem whatsoever. All that went so easy, no complaints. This thing is going to just be crazy. Listen, I'm gonna get back to it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage and remember, always be tuning. See you guys later.